later. Um, that's also because in addition to you know filming and editing and all the stuff that we do by ourselves for this project, I'm also going to be calling uh, you know for the lights to come down, for the sound to come on, etc. So uh, yeah, look forward to that. <laughs> Um, and I'm just curious, how many of you saw, came in here before and saw some of the project or have been around camps and seen some of you could raise your hands? Okay, great. So, so you've gotten a sense already of, of what it is. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if I should give too much of an introduction because we're probably going to get into it pretty much in depth here. Um, but it's, it's an amazing globe-spanning, median-spanning, ideology-spanning project um, that deals with the orphaned communities that were resulted from the Dutch capital, or capitalist expansion in the 16th and 17th century. And an interesting way of thinking about that is, you know, before America, before the British Empire, there was the Dutch Empire. Um, and in America, we kind of like to think about a melting pot, where we have a multicultural stew, which everything just kind of, you know, melts into it, and then we have this wonderful American, you know, amalgam that comes out of it. Um, but I think what this project shows is that it's not always that simple uh, and it's hard to reduce the cultures that result from these kind of big changes and you know, big business movements and cultural movements and hybrids and all these things that happen. So that's you know, something you get many tastes of in this project. Um, so I mean, I, I thought what we could just kind of start out with is how you, you know, figured out where you wanted to go in the world and because there's so many places you go to, you know, Suriname, you go to a synagogue in Indonesia, um, you, know, you go to South Africa, it's just all over the world. Like, how did you map it out and did you know ahead of time where you wanted to hit? <laughs> um, this project came about in four different stages and that's reflected in the work you see today. Uh, that you see in your map in four different chapters, four different names. So every stage had its own production period, its own beginning and end, its own dramas and its own uh, revelations. Um, basically, we uh, started in Sri Lanka. Um, I just did a press tour, you guys have already heard this. And uh, <laughs> um, because of my, my mixed heritage, um, part Dutch and I'm part Indonesian, um, I have relatives who, you know, who have part Dutch, part Indonesian uh, habits. And um, we came to Sri Lanka and we um, basically found this little community of uh, old ladies who live in a home together um, called uh, the, the St. Nicholas Home for, for Bur Dutch burger ladies. Burgers are people in Sri Lanka who are of mixed descent, so they are mixed Sri Lankan and mixed uh, with Portuguese, Dutch and British mostly. And um, I, I walked in there and I, I found that their culture was exactly the same as, as the culture of my family, which is this yeah hybrid, tropical, European, kind of old-fashioned European way of being, way of thinking, uh, similar insecurities as well. Uh, so it was a very profound moment actually for both of us. We're a married couple, so Kel knows my family very well. Um, and uh, that sort of started off just a realization that the world is connected in that way, you know, and also that those kinds of communities are, are, are disappearing. Yeah, and at the same time as, as we were doing the research on that and discovering that, we discovered the other side of that film, which is, as you know, uh, Herman Stuer, he's a, he's a man who has a, a Dutch-style village in the middle of the Sri Lankan jungle that's basically under constant attack from the elements uh, because it's built to the specifications of Europe, not built to the specifications of Sri Lanka. Um, and it's a place, it also is an old folks' home, and it's an old folks' home for people who are quote-unquote ruthless, i.e. they have you know, a roof over their head, we were called homeless. And there was something about putting these stories next to each other that it just it opened up this whole idea of multiple perspectives on one question. I guess the question being, what is the, how does the impact of the past resonate into the present? Um, and it seemed like we, we found this, this very interesting lens, or at least interesting enough to spend four years of our lives working on it. Um, and I mean, when you were traveling around the world, um, did you already have an idea of like, how that would turn into empire? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. Um, 
like Alina said, it was an organic process, starting with Legacy. Um, then we went to, we were invited to an artist residency in Amsterdam where we made Cradle, uh, which is the first work to kind of prototype as an interactive project. Um, and then into migrants and into periphery, finally. So it's been a process of researching piece by piece as we go, but there's, it's hard to explain what exactly it is in the stories that, that we find that, that compels us, that draws us. Um, but I can say that uh, the majority of the time we have to lay a really, really firm foundation of research before we can move, before we can do anything and reconfigure anything. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you take, for example, um, you visit a, a perfectly cool, like a pure blood community in South Africa. Uh, I mean, just to be, I'm curious how you kind of make people like that comfortable to speak as openly as they Or maybe they are just always, you know, talking about how they want a pure race. <laughs> Because, because an interesting part of this work that's also part of the hybrid is that it's not just an artwork, it's a, there's also like a journalistic aspect to it. I, th I, th I think we sort of, for the time that we spend with the people we film with, we <laughs> suspend judgment. And it's, it's kind of taxing in the case of uh, South Africa because it's in the middle of nowhere in this Afrikaner village. So you actually have to stay in the village. <laughs> if we want to film there for more than a day. You have to hate along with them. <laughs> <laughs> we were like whispering to each other at night, like, oh my god, I can't believe this that. Yeah, as like we were saying in the hotel that's owned by Arania, being like, every rant that I give is going to this. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit taxing, but yeah, we really try to um, get into people's own perspective, whatever that may be, you know, if that's intolerant or um, and actually sometimes you're surprised who says something really intolerant it's not it's not a black and white world so yeah I, I mean I think that's a great strength of the work that you're not judging uh, you know, the different voices you come across um, I mean I, I originally saw this in an earlier form I guess that was um, I guess it was just it was a cold empire at that point or? yeah I mean it's always the sort of umbrella project has always been empire. Um, and, and at that stage, which I actually saw in Amsterdam, uh, it was a multi-channel thing. Could you talk about the, like, the different countries that are in that one, just to sort of give people an idea of the base that they worked from after that? Yeah, I mean, I mean we started out, I think the, the main piece that we exhibited in Amsterdam is called Migrants, which actually you can find, um, all of you, if you go uh, over to Walter Reed, there's a tabletop unit, um, sort of like, you know, uh, Miss Pacman, I guess you could say, uh, that's showing this three-channel installation in Amsterdam. It was a sort of larger setup, but for this particular uh, presentation, we decided that we really wanted to try to kind of infect the like, inside. Um, and so we put all of these different small screens out there. And that piece was in Brazil, Suriname, and Ghana, um, and it kind of, it, it, it traces um, the unexpected, I guess you could say, after effects of the triangle trade of slavery. Um, and it, the way that that piece, I mean, that was, I would say that's the most difficult piece aesthetically and just to, to make an industry like within that space for, for, for that year, time. For a year every day, yeah. I think about the impact of slavery. So pretty... you, were, you were a year in Ghana and Suriname? Or... No, with production was production there. Production yeah. yeah. how, how long were you there? Each one of those was a little bit more than a month, I guess. Yeah, and then, but like, South Africa was, you know, a longer period. India was a very long period, uh, compared to it's three months. You have to, I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing, like, you want to, I always talk about, like, the eyes of the foreign cinematographer. Like, there's something about, if you look at, like, some of the best EPs in the U.S., a lot of them come from outside of the U.S. There's something about being able to view a culture from outside, but if you are too far outside of culture, then your understanding and your empathy uh, disappears, and it's just like, look at these weird people. And that's a really unfair way to think. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, so that, it, it, you went from that kind of project, I mean, Talk us through how you got from what was it, I guess, multi screen installation uh, into something that is multi platform here, uh, has an interactive key element of it, um, and it also has non traditional sites for some of it. I don't know uh, if any of you have been to the bathroom, for example, but you may have heard audio you might not know really hear. Um, you might have heard voices from across the Atlantic. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a very natural process because installations are spatial and in a way uh, online work is spatial as well. Um, I think a really good example is actually a piece that we're about to show you. We're in Alaska in a piece called uh, Cradle, 
Originally, it was called Empire Bakamat. This is a piece that we made. Um, uh, a standard museum bureau in Sudan invited us to make this piece uh, in the Domer, which is, um, I guess you could say, like, the, it's like a, a suburb of, of Amsterdam. And the way that we decided to approach it was to film um, two different stories side by side, set at the same location, and then you as a viewer could choose where you wanted to go. Whether you want to watch one story in its completion, watch another story in its completion, or, um, or sort of divide your attention. The way we did that was by setting up one screen and projecting on either side of it. So you as a viewer had to choose which way you would go. So that's spatial. When we decided to do the interactive version of it, we decided to basically, well, I can just sort of show you, I guess. Some of the ideas for the interactive and the video installation were that you can never be in one place at the same time in life. You always have, you have choices that you make and they steer you in a direction that means that there are all these other choices you could have made that you'll never make because you can't, so. Het klinkt heel raar, maar wat we eigenlijk hebben is eigenlijk een overleden, is eigenlijk vracht. Ja, helemaal. En bij de, de meeste maatschappijen betaal je dat per kilo. We zijn wel heel druk bezig om daarvan af te komen, omdat het, uh, het klinkt best wel gênant om te vragen hoe zwaar was je varen, want je betaalt per kilo. overleden in een vrachtloos op een pallet. Ja, stond het gewoon tussen de spijkerboeken en de topmolen in. Nou, dat is geen pal. Dat is geen pal. We hebben zo ongeveer 2000 overledenen hier per jaar. Dat betekent dus dat er bijna elke dag zes à zeven overleden zijn van allerlei culturen, van alle nationaliteiten. Ongeveer 1450 gaan terug naar het vaderland. Ik heb het wel uit. En ongeveer 600 zijn Nederlands mensen die terugkomen. Ik vind het best wel een mooi huisje. We hebben ongeveer 100 kinderen per jaar. Dat is voor ons ook moeilijk natuurlijk. Ja? Je denkt vaak aan je eigen kinderen, zo oud ze zijn, maar ook aan je eigen leeftijd. Dan denk je, hé, hey, oh wauw, nou mijn kop schieten. Zou ik al wel eens gevlogen? Uh, ja, ik ben uh, koning met het vliegtuig. Hier in Nederland. Nou, het zou ik Ik hou van cultuur. Nou, dat merk je, dat komt heel mooi uit in dit vak omdat we werken de hele dag met andere culturen. Dat leer je in de loop van de jaren leer je dat wel. Uh, dat is juist ook heel mooi. Het zachte van bijvoorbeeld de mensen uit Indonesië. De mooie gewaarden van de mensen uit Ghana. De rituele belasting van de overleden. Bijvoorbeeld uit Paramaribo met heel veel gezang en dergelijke. Het verschil tussen de rituelen, maar ook bijvoorbeeld het verschil tussen de landen op zich. Dat, 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 dat we dat pas gaan doen al uh, in 2014. 
Heel veel mensen gaan pas plannen maken als ze 65 zijn. Ja, voor pensioen. Nou, ik zie gewoon uh, 70% van de overledenen die hier binnenkomen, hebben de 65 niet gehaald. Heel belangrijk statement in mijn leven is genieten. En niet uitstellen, maar doen op het moment. Aan de motoren. Ja, ik vind dat dan wel het belangrijkste van het vliegtuig en ik vind dat ook wel het mooiste. that was shot over the course of, of really like two, um, three week increments, one in the US, one in Australia, but we had to do it over the course of six months just because of financing and getting everything together. So we had to hold the, the visual references in our head and basically create like a chart. Um, and then like we could sort of go back to it. Like first we shot in the US and, and held on to those images and then shot it in Australia and had to sort of mimic some of them. So it's this very, very long directed process. Like, that's why, I mean, when you say journalistic, like it is journalistic, but there's an element always of collaboration with the people that, that we work with um, that I think, you know, probably places it somewhere on the like documentary fiction matrix, um, closer to documentary, obviously, but because we're dealing with real subjects and real people. Um, but yeah, you know, there's some latitude there. Um, I mean, something else that this, you know, having multiple sites and, and interactive uh, element, uh, it, it also is a good way of expressing the kind of themes of migration, you know, the, the travel, um, the ending up somewhere. I mean, like, we're all here kind of accidentally in a way, you know, depending on where our ancestors happen to have lived before us and how they up here. Um, and that's actually the kind of focus of this, um, that, that you're, you're many generations removed from where you know, these people's ancestors are. So could you talk about how that kind of serendipity plays into the whole structure of the project? I think from the start, like we talked about a little earlier in the case of Sri Lanka, um, we felt like the nature of the material warrants a perspective that, you know, acknowledges <coughs> all these different perspectives, so we played with duality a lot, and we still do that, you know, the periphery is the last uh, piece that we just finished, which is, you know, America and, and Australia flipped um, geographically two parts of the world. Um, I think I'm straying. You seem to have an answer. <laughs> um, I have no answer to that. <laughs> just so you know, I mean, like, in terms of the way that we put things together, like, we were up last night, with the help of Brett, the designer of this, you know, putting in these units, like we film most of the stuff as a two-person crew. We edit the stuff by ourselves. Like it really is. I mean, it's this insane. Yeah, like when it comes to the programming. I mean, Sam Bailey, who's over there, he is you know the programmer, and he does pretty much all the coding. Clint uh, Bahari, you know, is our designer. He does all the design. Like things like that. There it is. He's asleep basically because he was up all last night making gifts. You know what I mean? Like this is like this isn't a project like uh, yeah, like an NFP project or something like that. I mean, this really is like every everyone is giving not just like their flesh and blood anymore. Like everybody's giving like their bones on this. So. Yeah, I mean, like, at this so point... So I just drifted off for a second. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so basically, like, 
as these questions are coming at us, we're thinking like, okay, so is that unit working? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, duality, I think, is yeah. something we do. And could you could just quickly describe what's in periphery for anyone who hasn't yet been able to see it? Um, basically, on, on the United States side, we filmed with a man who is of Dutch Indonesian descent, who, like many people, like, like my family actually, uh, moved as refugees to the Netherlands in the 50s. Um, some of these people decided they didn't want to stay in Holland, it was too cold, they wanted to go somewhere else. <laughs> um, and about 10,000 people ended up in California. And it, we found this guy who everyone calls the Mexican, and uh, it's because, <laughs> because he's like, you know, light brown, dark hair, he must be Mexican, because, you know, that's the reference in California. So, he, what was interesting about him is that he plays Mexicans in movies, he's an extra in movies. So he's really, on that level, but also on a much more personal level, really owning that identity that is, has been given to him. So we thought that was very interesting, and yeah, his migratory path, obviously, is sort of that historical element. But on the other side, in Australia, his, his mirror image, yeah, I mean, the, the image, I mean, you should really check, check it out. You should really go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, is that the top, so the top of one image, it. and then you have a mirror image up on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the other side is a man of Aboriginal descent whose ancestors uh, welcomed uh, Dutch sailors who shipwrecked on the coast, which is, I mean, there was nothing there except for cliffs and uh, a couple of Aboriginal tribes. Um, I mean, this is not proven. There is DNA research being done right now, but he's he's owning that identity. And actually, what's kind of interesting about him is that because he is owning that Dutchness inside him, it probably, if he can prove it, will give him, you know, more of a claim on the land. Because in Australia, that's always a problem, I think, for Aboriginals to, you know, prove that they've been in an area. So. It's really, you know, Dutch colonialism, it's a slice of life, it's a slice of history, um, but there are many stories contained in this project. Yeah, and if I can just say about that, just to lead into the next clip, um, basically the, the last thing that we're going to be showing you, because really a lot of this is about you guys are kind of walking around and finding this stuff for yourself. Um, the last thing that we're going to show you is, is the interactive version of uh, Legacy, which I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it, it was looping before. It's the two channel pieces from India, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, and South Africa. Um, we've kind of looked at what Alina was talking about, you know, like the thematic connections. Nicholas brought it up before the thematic connections between all these places. And we, we sort of were looking at like, how does branching narrative work? Like, instead of branching narrative in the, in the, the sense of like, oh, do I follow this character that way or that character that way, we realized that there were these thematic connections between these four different pieces that make up legacy that we could use as kind of like bridges for people to watch it. So like, instead of just watching Sri Lanka all the way through, which you have the freedom to do in the interactive version, you would say, I want to watch like, you know, the, I want to watch everything about identity, or I want to watch everything about uh, business, or I want to watch everything about, you know, one of these four themes that comes up. So, um, I think without further ado, uh, we're going to be showing this piece, and uh, so you know it's it's launching in, will we call it Alpha, Sam? Sure. Can you know? <laughs> okay, um, we'll be launching this later tonight, and it's definitely going to be up online as of tomorrow at empireproject.eu, along with Cradle. Um, it's sort of, it'll give you an idea, it's kind of like uh, the bones of a site, and um, it has these pieces, and over time we'll be doing it for you. Um, so yeah, it's much This is a legacy. Though. Yeah, and instead of doing one of the like, you know, oh, you know, I'm gonna like, I'm really gonna operate this. I'm gonna show you the best possible version. Of it. What I think, just to give you an idea, I'm just gonna click the first thing I see every single time. So let's see what happens then.
I was on my trip to New Zealand. I was doing business in Eels. In Sri Lanka they call it Anda, in, in America they call it Eels. There is a availability, there is a demand. Who connects is the businessman. Businessman is nothing. They connect the availability between demand. That's all. What is wrong in that? We do business. There are the buyers, we are sellers. I bring the stone from one area, I do process here, I sell it to the place where they want. That's all. I'm not creating anything. It is an art of business.